Hey there everybody, it's Wayne D. Welcome to the website, WayneD.com. Today we're looking at the great Australian champion Peter Thompson. That will be Thompson without a P, as you can see. Pretty underrated player. He won the British Open five times. One of the times was in 1965 when the Americans started coming over. And he beat Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, and and Tony Lima. The other ones were in the 50s and when the Americans uh, they didn't really come over very much wasn't enough prize money for the guys to make the trip but he won 84 total tournaments he won the New Zealand Open nine times but the, the really cool thing about Thompson is he came over to play the US Senior Tour for a year and won nine times in 1985. And having proved his point, he went back home. So this swing on the left is the best uh, angle. The camera's too high, obviously, but it's uh, stable and it is pretty much right on the hand line, so we can check it out and actually draw some lines on it. And we'll see how good this is. I, I put that picture on the right up there because I wanted, uh, wanted you to check out Thompson's grip. It's very strong, which, you know, you see that these days. So he's at impact, is achieving a, a line of compression there with a drive hold type release. But the grip is strong enough that the left wrist is still flexed back. Although that would be what my friend Jeff Mann would call a geometrically flat left wrist, because if you take that strong grip and you move it into an impact position like that, it's going to be bent back and not bent forward. If you bend it forward, you're going to lose a lot of loft. Anyway, so let's look at this picture. Uh, Let's do that. All right, so let's draw these lines one more time here. All right, now when the camera's too high, the club usually appears to come underneath the, the shaft line, which is why you have to be careful with what you say about what's going on, depending on camera height and angle, but we can see that it pretty much comes up right up the plane and at P3 that shaft is pretty much perfectly on plane. Like you can see the depth in the right hip. Doesn't come into the ground very much in the backswing, it's just going to turn it up lay it off just a hair. So with that strong grip, when he flattens his wrist a little bit here, that motion will lay the club back, flatten it. And it's in transition where you'll see the head drop. As he's going to create more room, see the depth remain in the hips. This is it is some of the best leg action that you'll see. Look how deep that is. Keeps his head out over the ball very nicely. And then that club comes down pretty close to his original plane there. And there's a hallmark of great ball strikers, that right arm bent into and past impact, straightening to the left. There you see the but left release over here. So pretty classic move. Very disciplined on the feet. You can just see it's just snappy, but it's not jumping at it. All right, so got some got some very cool angles to watch. 
Let's watch a couple of these different different angles. Really enjoy watching the the footwork here. So here you can see the wrist is fairly neutral here. The face is a little bit on the face in the sky side, and that just gives you an idea that the grip is pretty strong. And then the hands out in front move. This is Hogan's sidearm throw. This swing, I would say, is, is quite reminiscent of, uh, of Hogan. So here's when we can really see the, really see the grip. So take a look at that right hand. Now if you put your right hand like that where the, the so-called V is underneath that forearm pointing, I mean the average, and this again, a bad camera angle, but if you pull the camera over to where it was in front of the ball, you'd still see that right hand is way way strong there. So a couple other things to, to mention here. We see a, a definite rocking to the right in the backswing. And then in transition, that right leg is going to reverse direction, but stay back. And you can tell by the footwork how deep that hip is, because that right foot is going to bend in this way. And if he was driving his knee up toward the ball, that's not going to happen. So once that gets the hips to move a little bit to the right in the backswing with a little head movement, so he's loading definitely to the right. And he's going to start right about P3 to start moving back to the left and catching that backswing. So you're going to see that right hip move from where it is here in transition. It's going to move immediately quite a bit. So you'll see this more in the in the old style swings. So more leg drive in general. So he's set up with his left foot a little bit outside of his hip. Again, camera angle is a little off here, but when that left foot's outside the hip, then you can shift pretty much and the foot won't appear to roll over as much, but you can still see how the feet go inside ball of the right foot, outside edge toward the back of the left foot. So great sequence. It's got plenty of lateral movement. The head stays still. A really nice look there. So here's a picture from another angle. This would give us an idea of, of an iron shot. How we had that club pointing well to the left and then right back at it. And again, that right leg has got that glute driving up and left and not out from under him. And a couple of pictures from the rear view, which we don't get to see much. So you will see that transition move is going to be a forward pelvic move with the left leg still kicking in a little bit. So we know we're, we know we're starting the downswing from shifting the hip motion from clockwise to counterclockwise. Now this will give you a good idea of the ankle movement. Watch the, the bending down here and here. I think supple ankles are very important in the swing. I see a lot of players who lock up that left ankle and never finish their swing. And I also see a lot of players who, when they Transition, they lift the heel more due to the fact that they're driving their right leg up under them. This is very instructive here. 
There's one from the front. Again, see a little jog to the right in the back swing. And while he does that a little bit, he does not allow his right foot to roll over. Big deal there. So now he has a nice base to come from. Gives it that inward drive with the right. So I always call that a 45 degree slide turn like Trevino called it. Somebody made a comment on, uh, I think it was on YouTube, said Trevino also called it a, the hula shift. <laughs> so that, that's another good one there. So if you think of a hula motion, it would be a circular motion back this way, along with the lateral shift. Very nice. And a couple more swings here. Here you can really see the sequence. You're going to see the back muscles re remain where they are while the pelvic, oops, while the pelvis begins to rotate back over this way. So you'll see this guy and this guy are going to stay put. And that's the essence of sequence. We want to start with the pelvic movement against the brace of the right foot. And we want to leave the hands right where they are. And in that case, that shaft really is pretty much guaranteed to flatten a little bit because the rotation in here is going to take that left shoulder and move it around right away. Very nice. Another one. So as you watch his left heel, doesn't really lift it up very much. Again, sort of like Hogan, where Hogan said that he didn't really care if it came up, and if it did, it would be uh, a small amount. So Thompson really is, is kind of doing that. But the key is that when he does lift his heel up, he's still on the inside ball of that foot. So the knee is kicking inward. And then he can remove it back over here quickly. Nice. So that's pretty amazing. First or second in the British Open, seven straight years. There's a better idea. There's one at full speed. You get so many of these swings are in slow motion. It's really nice to see one. Where you can see how you could crack it out there. Beautiful. So that's a really good example of anybody's going to tell you that the downswing has started with the left knee or the left hip. They're just wrong. Because you can see this downswing is transitioning right here while the left knee is kicking inward. Another nice full motion swing here. There you can see a really a good picture of the left heel as it lifts a little bit, knee kicks in, replants, beautiful rhythm. And that's, a, that's about it. So hats off to Peter Thompson, great career, and uh, we'll miss him.